Welcome to our lecture online and in this next set of examples we're going to show you how to find the volume that is created by taking an area defined by a set of equations and rotating it about some sort of axis. The best way to show you that is simply by showing you some examples. We can go through the theory but that doesn't really mean much to most people. Let's just go ahead and show you several examples to, so we can catch on on how to do that. That's really what it comes down to is a good technique and how to do that. So here we have an area that's bounded by the equation y equals x squared, which is a parabola. We did not draw this part of the parabola because we're also bounded by the line y equals 5, which is this line right here, and the line x equals 0, which is the y-axis. So it's this area right here, and we're going to rotate that area about the y-axis. So when we rotate it like that, we get kind of like a, a bowl-shaped object. So we're going to rotate that all the way around, and so we end up with something that looks like this but it's complete volume wise so it's rotated around like that so we kind of like a bowl coming up flat at the top and parabolic in shape all the way around like that okay so that's what we're trying to find the volume of how do we do that well we need to get a volume element we need to find a dv and there's different ways of doing that we can get what we call flat disks we get washers we get hollow cylinders all kinds of ways in which we can do that in this case since it's a solid object all the way around we can maybe just take a slice like this so we can take a small little slice so the thickness of the slice is a dy so the thickness of the slice is a dy and then the area of the slice is simply the area of a circular object, right? This would be like a, a disk, a circular object at the top. And so the area would be equal to pi r squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and redraw that small little volume element. And when I do that, it would look kind of like this. There's my volume element. It would be a small little disk shape. So if I take a saw, if this is a solid object, and I take a saw and I cut it like this, cut it like that, take this small little sliver and put it over there, I would get like a small thin disc, where the thickness of the disc is dy, and this would be the radius of the disc, r. And so therefore, the, the volume right there, the, the small little volume of the small little disc called dv would be equal to the area times the height, which is dy, and the area would be pi r squared times dy. The question now in this case is what is the r equal to in terms of what I have drawn here? And notice the r is simply this distance from there to there, so this would be the r, and that would be the distance from the x-axis to the outside of this curve right here, which is defined by y equals x squared. And so r then in this case would be equal to distance from 0 to what x is defined of by this right here, so it would be this x call this x sub 1, so this distance right here would be simply equal to x. Alright, so then when I do that, if I plug that in here, I can say that my volume element is equal to pi times x squared dy. Okay, so does everybody see here that this is x equal to r, x is simply the distance from 0 to the outside here of this volume element, or I shouldn't say a volume moment, but this, this uh, shape right here, and the distance from there to there is simply defined by this equation right there, so I'm dealing with this x right there. Since I call it x sub 1, let's call it x sub 1 here, and let's call it x sub 1 there, so we don't lose track of which x we're dealing with. Okay, now what do I do when I want to find the whole volume? Well, I'm going to take ahead, uh, go ahead and take the next slice, the next slice, the next slice, the next slice, and add them all up, all these little slices are all dv's and they all have the same dimensions. It's pi r squared times the height dy and r will always be equal to x no matter where I'm at. So there's always a value equal to x which is the outside minus the inside. The outside is this x right there. The inside would be x equals 0. So I want to find the whole uh, volume. The whole volume is equal to the sum of all the little dv's and the sum of course is the integral of all the dv's. I'm going to integrate from y equals 0 to y equals 5 because I'm given the upper limit here and the lower limits, so from 0 to 5, and these are y limits. And dv is defined right there, so this is equal to the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 5. Instead of dv, I can write pi x1 squared dy. 
Now you can see that my limits are in terms of y, my differential is in terms of y, but my variable is in terms of x. So I'm going to have to replace that x by what's equal to in terms of y. So when I come up here, I see that x1 squared is equal to y. So instead of writing x1 squared, I'm going to write equal, I'm going to write y. So this is equal to the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 5. And notice that pi is just a constant, so I can take that outside integral sign. So I'll write it here, pi. And instead of x1 squared, I'm going to write y dy. And I'm ready to integrate, because that's an easy integral. y dy integrated becomes y squared. So this is pi y squared over 2. I add one to the exponent, divide by no exponent. And the limits are from 0 to 5. When I plug in the upper limit, I get this is equal to pi times 5 squared over 2. When I plug in the lower limit, of course, I get 0. And that means that this is equal to 25 over 2 pi as the volume of this thing created when I took this area right here, bounded by the parabola, the straight line y equals 5, and the, the y-axis. If I took this and swung all the way around the y-axis, getting this bowl-shaped region, I take a slice, which is my little dv volume. I then add it all up. I add up all the little dvs, give me the total volume, and that will then be 25 over 2 pi. And that's how we do a simple example like this. And I have a whole bunch of examples ready for you. So if you want to get the feel for it, you want to look at a number of different examples because the technique will vary depending upon what the shape is that you end up with.